What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in COD World War II. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the Stinger LMG. Now in real life, the Stinger is actually kind of a Frankenstein version of the M1919 Browning. It's an American LMG that fires a 30 6 round at approximately 1,000 rounds per minute. In COD World War II, we get a damage profile of 50-40, meaning it's always going to be a 2-3 shot kill, although when we look at the range breakdown, same thing with all of the LMGs, the point where it drops off to that 3 shot kill is so far away that you'll never actually be able to find a practical line of sight long enough, so realistically speaking, this is always a 2 shot kill unless you're shooting through cover. Our rate of fire is a little bit faster than the Bren at 313 rounds per minute, and with rapid fire we can bump that up to 333 rounds per minute. This means our statistical minimum time to kill within its two shot kill range, which is all ranges like I said, is extremely fast at 192 milliseconds. For headshots we get a standard headshot multiplier of 1.1, taking our headshot damage profile up to a 55, which means headshots realistically speaking are doing nothing to help you with this. As for our ranges, like I said, you're not going to be able to find a range long enough to find that drop off point where it drops to a three shot kill, and also in hardcore modes, just wanted to point out it will be a one shot kill all the time in hardcore modes. Our hipfire spread is the worst in the LMG category, possibly the worst in the entire game. It is tied with the Bren, and as you can see there, it is quite large. As for idle sway, it actually does have a noticeable amount of idle sway considering the use of this gun. This is normally a gun used for really long ranges, so you absolutely will notice a little bit of idle sway when you're trying to pick those targets off at longer ranges. Getting into recoil, as you can see here, it's an extremely accurate LMG, it barely moves at all, sometimes it kicks a little bit vertically, but generally it stays very well centered, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever with recoil. Getting into our magazine capacity, it's got a great magazine capacity at 80 rounds with 160 in reserve, and with extended mags we bump that up to 100 rounds with 200 in reserve. Our reload add time is a little bit on the slow side, even for the LMG category, at 5.19 seconds. Luckily with this gun though, you won't need to reload very often because it has such a slow fire rate and such a large magazine capacity. Moving on to handling and mobility, the one big downside to using this gun over the Bren is its aim down sight time. This is the slowest in the game at 550 milliseconds. Keep in mind, a lot of gunfights in Call of Duty last less than 550 milliseconds, so most of the other guns in the game can actually kill you before you can even aim down sight, and this is why quick draw is an absolute necessity with this LMG. As for our sprint out time, it's not quite as slow as our aim down sight time, but it's still pretty slow at 400 milliseconds. Our movement speed is standard for LMGs at 92.5%, and our aim down sight stray speed is on the slow side for the LMGs, it is tied with the Bren at 28%. Now moving on to my favorite attachments for the Stinger, first up, like I said, quick draw. If you're not using quick draw on this LMG, in my opinion, you're doing something wrong. It's an absolute necessity. After that, I'm not really a huge fan of the iron sights on this gun, so I often run a reflex sight, but if you're somebody that really likes to hang back and pick people off at super long distances, the 4x sight is an excellent choice as well. And then for my third attachment, I'm usually going to use steady aim or rapid fire. The other attachments I would say aren't very necessary, grip is absolutely not needed, and extended mags only gives you that extra 20 rounds, you've already got an amazing magazine capacity for the fire rate on this gun, so extended mags is not necessary either. Getting into a couple example classes for this LMG, first up we have a resistance class, and the main purpose of using resistance with an LMG is for that built-in lookout perk. It gives you that larger minimap radius, and it also allows you to see those red name tags about their heads at super long distances, which definitely helps with your target acquisition. The nice bonus with that too is if somebody starts sneaking up on you, you will be able to see them with that sixth sense-like ability. With this one, our attachments are quick draw, steady aim, as well as the reflex sight, and our basic training is scoped so we can eliminate that little bit of idle sway that it has to help us to be more accurate at those longer ranges, and also it helps us strafe noticeably faster in gunfights, which is very very important with an LMG. My secondary, as always with these classes, is a 9mm SAP with extended mags, our lethal is a sticky grenade, and our tactical is a stun grenade. This class is excellent for hanging back and picking people off at a distance, and really just locking down a particular area of the map, which is what this gun really excels at. Next up we have a bit of a variation that allows you to be slightly more aggressive, get into the areas where there's going to be more explosives, but not a whole lot changes with this. With this one we're using the armor division, we've got quick draw, steady aim, and rapid fire this time so we don't have that reflex sight. Our basic training is still going to be scoped just like with the last class, I feel like it's very important to have something that allows you to stray faster so it's either going to be infantry or scoped, and in this case we are going to be sticking with scoped. And then the rest of the class is exactly the same as most of the classes I have in the game. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's gun guide. As always, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of this LMG? 
For me personally, I actually really enjoy it quite a bit. You just have to be very careful with when you're aiming down sight. You definitely don't want to be running into an enemy not aim down sight, or at least in the process of starting to aim down sight, because it takes so long, even with quick draw, that any decent player will usually drop you before you can even get fully aimed down sight. If you stick to its strengths and you use it to lock down lanes and entire areas of the map, you can absolutely dominate with this gun. As always, if you guys have missed any of the other episodes of Gun Guides, I've covered every single gun so far, aside from the new ones, but with the new ones I have covered the Nambu, I will leave a link to that playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.